uh, Christian who has made a difference this week is Henry Dunnant. Henry Dunnant, the founder of the Red Cross. Henry Dunnant was born in Geneva, Switzerland in 1828, the first son of a successful businessman and his wife. His family was devoutly Christian and they had significant influence in Geneva society. His parents, as Christians wanting to care for others, stressed the value of social work. His father was active, helping orphans and parolees, while his mother worked with the sick and poor. Dunnant was a devout Christian and in 1848, at age 20, he organised a group of like-minded young men known as the Union of Geneva. Their aim was to be more effective in Christian charity, to heat up the lukewarm believers and to convert those who had not yet met God. In the years that followed, the young Dunnant showed tremendous organisational ability and soon built bridges between his group in Geneva and like-minded groups elsewhere, including the Young Men's Christian Association, which had been founded in London just four years earlier. Dunnant suggested that these groups should cooperate internationally and as a result, representatives met in Paris in August 1855 and formed the World Alliance of YMCA's. In 1849, at age 21, Dunnett was forced to leave college because of poor grades and he joined a money-changing firm with international interests. In his business role, he was on his way to consult with Napoleon III about water rights in Algeria when he arrived in Solferino in northern Italy. In Solferino, he saw the bloody aftermath of war between, on the one side, Italy and France and on the other side, Austria. 40,000 men lay dead and dying and little was done to care for the wounded. In those days, a battle wound was almost always a death sentence. Almost anyone else would have run away in horror, but this visionary genius saw the opportunity to use his organisational skills. He soon had neighbouring townspeople organised and had the wounded moved into homes, chapels and even a castle, and he begged material support from local nobles. Remarkably, he persuaded people to care equally for the wounded enemy because, as a Christian, he saw all men as brothers, even the enemy. Dunnett wrote a book about this experience called A Memory of Solferino and published it in 1862. He sent copies to key leaders in European countries. There was a positive reaction that something should be done and in February 1863 a group of five Christians met to start action. This is seen as the founding date of the Red Cross Society. In October of that year, 31 delegates from 16 nations met to take action. Dunnant's idea was that medical personnel should be considered neutral by both sides of a conflict in wartime, and it was agreed that a symbol would be required for these medical personnel. A red cross on a white flag was suggested and adopted. Agreements needed to be formalised, and one year later, 12 nations signed the first Geneva Convention, agreeing to Dunnant's proposals. Three years later, another nine nations had signed. In following years, Red Cross societies were set up in numerous nations and three more Geneva Conventions have been held, each one furthering the obligations of warring parties. However, after the first convention, Henry Dunnant's life fell apart. He was sued for bankruptcy as he had neglected his business duties to further his Christian ideals of caring for others. As a poor, forgotten man, he went to live in a little Swiss village called Haydn for some years. However, he was found by a journalist and finally given some recognition. He received the Nobel Prize in 1901, but he died a lonely man nine years later in 1910. He had spent none of his prize money, willing it instead to charity. We salute the founder of the Red Cross, Henry Dunnant, a Christian who has made a difference.